Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and welcome to this webcast on Unit 10.6, Consolidation Status in the Field. When you're through with this webcast, you should be able to describe what normally consolidated conditions are and explain the geologic history that leads to them. You should also be able to describe over-consolidated conditions and describe one or more geologic histories that would also lead to these conditions. Given data from both field and lab tests, you should be able to determine if a soil is normally consolidated or over-consolidated. And for over-consolidated soils, you should be able to determine the over-consolidation margin and over-consolidation ratio. And finally, given the consolidation data for one point in a soil stratum, you should be able to determine the consolidation parameters at another point in the stratum. Let's begin with a few definitions. If a soil is normally consolidated, in the field, that soil is currently at its highest effective vertical stress that it's ever seen. In contrast, if a soil is over-consolidated, the current effective stress in the field is lower than the greatest vertical effective stress that it's seen in the past. Given a typical laboratory data such as this, we discussed in the recent module how we can use a Casa Grande's construction to determine the pre-consolidation stress, and from that, reconstruct a field consolidation curve. When we're done with that, we'll have a curve that looks like this with both a recompression and inversion curve. Now we might think that a laboratory curve like this indicates that the soil is over-consolidated because it has both a recompression and a inversion curve. However, that's not necessarily the case. All lab consolidation curves show a recompression and inversion curve, and laboratory samples are always over-consolidated but that does not necessarily mean that the soil in the field will be over-consolidated. To determine if the soil in the field is over-consolidated, we must look at both field and lab data together. To understand how field conditions can differ from laboratory conditions, we're going to look at two different scenarios. The first is a case of a normally consolidated conditions. And in fact, this is a scenario we've already looked at in a previous presentation, but we're going to go over it again this time with some additional information. So we're going to start with a point A that's just below the bottom of the ocean in a depositional environment. Right now, point A is at a very low vertical effective stress, as shown by point 1 on our compression plot. As the sediment is deposited on top of A, it will continue to consolidate and it will travel from point 1 to point 2 along the virgin curve. If we then come into sample at point A, we're going to take it out of the ground and in the process unload it and the soil will travel along the rebound curve from point 2 to point 3. We then test our soil in the lab and it will reconsolidate first along the recompression curve from point 3 to point 4 and then when it gets back to the virgin curve it'll travel along the virgin curve from point 4 to point 5. And using this laboratory data we can determine the preconsolidation stress sigma prime c. Now let's go back out to the field for a moment and back up before we took the sample. So the soil at point A is at an effective stress that represented by point 2, the point where it was before we unloaded it to take it out of the field. Now if we were to build a fill on this soil right now with some thickness H fill and some unit weight gamma fill, that's going to put an additional stress on the soil. And the soil is going to consolidate and travel down the virgin curve from point 2 to point 6. And the amount of stress increase will be gamma fill times H fill. However, from looking at the laboratory data, we won't be able to tell if the soil field is normally consolidated or over-consolidated. The laboratory curve still has a recompression section and a virgin section and a preconsolidation stress sigma prime C. The only way that we can tell whether the soil in the field is normally consolidated or over-consolidated is to go back out to the field at a time before the fill was placed and determine the, the initial effective vertical stress, sigma prime zero. We'll determine this stress as the total stress minus the pore pressure. We'll then take sigma prime zero, the initial vertical stress in the field, and compare it to the pre-consolidation stress we computed in the laboratory. In this case, we'll find that the two are equal, and that tells us that the soil is normally consolidated, because the current vertical effective stress in the field, sigma prime zero, is equal to the greatest stress the soil has ever seen in its history, sigma prime c. That's the definition of a normally consolidated soil. 
We'll now look at a second scenario, in this case for an overconsolidated soil. We'll start this problem off the same way we did the previous one, with point A just below the bottom of the ocean floor, starting off at a very low effective stress shown by point 1. Again, sedimentation occurs and the soil is loaded along the virgin curve from point 1 to point 2. But in this case, there's additional soil deposition and the soil continues to consolidate and it'll travel along the virgin curve, this time from point 2 to point 3. Now there's a change in geologic history. Erosion occurs and the height of the soil over point A is reduced. In this case, the soil is going to unload and it's going to have to follow the rebound curve from point 3 to point 4 as the effective stress decreases. We now come to the site, drill a boring, and take a sample out of the ground. In the process of taking the sample out of the ground, we again unload the sample. And so there's additional unloading, this time from point 4 to point 5, again along the rebound curve. We then take this sample, put it in our consolidometer, and perform a laboratory test where we reload it and the soil will load along the recompression curve from point 5 to point 3 and then along the virgin curve from point 3 to point 6. And from this laboratory data we'll determine the preconsolidation stress sigma prime c as shown. So we now go back out to the field and determine the current vertical effective stress sigma prime 0 again as the total stress minus the pore pressure. We go back to our laboratory data and plot the, the current vertical effective stress, which will be at the same as point 4, which is where the soil was unloaded to in geologic history. And we'll find out that sigma prime 0 is less than sigma prime c. Or the current vertical effective stress is less than the greatest of vertical effective stress the soil has ever seen, sigma prime c. And that's the definition of an overconsolidated soil. Well, now that we've determined how to tell if a soil is overconsolidated or normally consolidated, we have one more question to answer, and that is, for a soil that is overconsolidated, how overconsolidated is it? That is, what's its degree of overconsolidation? Is it just a little overconsolidated, or is it highly overconsolidated? Well, to do that, let's look at this laboratory developed consolidation curve. When we're done with the laboratory curve, we will have determined both the recompression and compression indices and the preconsolidation stress, sigma prime c. Then from our field data, we'll determine the current vertical effective stress, sigma prime zero. And the difference between those will be an indication of the degree of overconsolidation. There are two ways we can describe this degree of overconsolidation. The first is by the overconsolidation margin, sigma prime m. The Overconsolidation margin is simply the difference between the preconsolidation stress sigma prime c and the current vertical effective stress sigma prime zero. Another way we can describe the degree of overconsolidation is the overconsolidation ratio, which is the preconsolidation stress sigma prime c divided by the current vertical effective stress sigma prime zero. We can use either one of these, they both describe how overconsolidated the soil is, but our calculations will be slightly different depending on which one we use. Both are used in practice. In general, sigma prime m is more convenient to use and a little more accurate, particularly for lightly overconsolidated soils. So let's quickly summarize the field conditions that are possible. In the field, the soil can either be normally consolidated, sometimes abbreviated NC. In this case, the soil in the field is currently at the highest vertical effective stress it's ever seen. Sigma prime zero is equal to sigma prime c, the consolidation margin is zero, and the overconsolidation ratio is one. Alternatively, the soil in the field could be overconsolidated, sometimes abbreviated OC. In this case, the soil in the field is currently at a lower vertical effective stress than it has been sometime in the past. Sigma prime zero is less than sigma prime c, the overconsolidation margin is greater than zero, and the overconsolidation ratio is greater than one. We have one last topic to cover in this webcast. When we're developing soil profiles for a site, we divide the soil up into layers or different stratum, and within each stratum, we treat the soil as if it's the same. But what do we really mean by saying that soil is the same within a stratum? What we mean is the soil has the same mineral makeup and the same chemistry and that the particle size distribution of the soil is the same. 
So the soil all comes from the same geologic process and is deposited in the same way, but that doesn't mean everything within one stratum is the same. To illustrate, let's look at this example. So we have a single soil stratum here shown, and we're going to first consider the soil at point A. We take a sample from point A, and if we take it to the laboratory, there will be some initial vertical effective stress, sigma prime zero at A, and the soil will start out at some initial void ratio, E naught at A. And from our laboratory tests, we can determine a consolidation curve for the soil. And it will have some pre-consolidation stress, sigma prime C at A, and we'll determine the compressibility of the soil, C sub C and C sub R. So we have a description of the soil. We know its compressibility, and we know its pre-consolidation stress. Now let's consider another point deeper in the soil stratum at B. Now at point B, there'll be a higher initial vertical effective stress, sigma prime zero. Since it's deeper in the soil, it'll be higher. So sigma prime zero at B will be bigger than sigma prime zero at A. And the soil must start off at some lower void ratio, E naught at B, since it's going to be more consolidated at B than at A, since it's at a higher vertical effective stress. Now if we load this soil, it's going to have the same compressibility as the soil at A, so it will load initially along the same reload curve, C sub R, but it's going to intersect the version curve at a different point, and it'll have a different sigma prime C. So sigma prime C at B is going to be different than sigma prime C at A. So when we say soils are the same, what we mean are their compressibility is the same, which means C sub C and C sub R are the same, and they have the same degree of overconsolidation, which means the OCR or sigma prime M are the same. What's not the same at two different locations within the same soil are the initial void ratio, E naught, the initial vertical effective stress, sigma naught, and therefore the pre-consolidation stress, sigma C, is going to be different also. So when we say a soil is the same, we're saying that the mineralogy and the chemistry and the particle makeup is the same and it was deposited in the same fashion. It has the same compressibility and the same degree of overconsolidation, but not everything is the same. So, let's summarize. We can't tell if a soil is overconsolidated from simply looking at the lab tests alone. All lab tests are overconsolidated because we take the soil out of the ground and unload it, so when we test in the lab, it will always have a recompression curve. We must compare the initial vertical effective stress in the field, sigma prime zero, with our sigma prime C developed in the lab to tell whether the soil is overconsolidated or not. We can use either OCR or sigma prime N to determine how overconsolidated a certain soil is. Using the overconsolidation ratio and the overconsolidation margin won't give exactly the same answers in our computation, but either one's acceptable. Within a given soil stratum, we assume that the compressibility is the same, C sub C and C sub R, and the degree of overconsolidation is the same, that is OCR or sigma prime M. But therefore, E naught, sigma prime zero, and sigma prime C will all be different at different locations within the soil stratum. Is it not, is it not, is it not, amigos?